amazing. The landscape, the river, really huge. Really nice section to glaze. Past the wrong glacier, a very steep section of river, no eddies, super steep and continuous, not really runnable at this flow uh, with that kind of gradient. No. Now. Too dangerous. Yeah. I think it's high, but whenever. Um, but there are a lot of trees inside the river. Uh, maybe dangerous. K Doc says he's floated paddled this section once before, but he doesn't remember everything. Um, and he thinks it's still very high. It's probably twice the flow that what he did it before. The people who recommend doing this section, recommend having 8 to 15 Cumex and we're probably at 20. This is the barrage or dam in Fitch. So down here at Fitch, just before it, the water returns to the river from the upper power uh, intake. I have a nice hydroelectric generating plant here. Um, and I can see on satellite images there's little water in the river downstream of here, sometimes of year, even in summer. But now we have really high river flows, so the river's stomping downstream probably with 20 to 30 km. We're gonna lock and maybe put it in just downstream. Uh, I think it's really too high for the first gauge. And good, maybe high for the second gauge. Let's do it. It's really stout class 5 
about maybe four portages, one second one really long. Right after that first ridge, uh, class five, and that's like a five plus, we all portage. We all portage a long section after that, maybe one other. And I read this one, this has a thing in the run. I walked it. But it's just very continuous. They're good lines. There's a hole down there, it can munch you a little bit. Second class five plus at this flow. We're all portaging on the right. End of the very tough section. Still got a little bit more felt rapid. Got a lot of water. It was very, very fun. It was uh, a lot of water, good both, it was exceptional. Okay, Doc, what you say? It's good, really good. It's really worthy to paddling the Volume River in France. So, we are in Switzerland, but it's like two hours from my town. Really good discover. <laughs> so, what's your words on this uh, <laughs> section of river? Yeah, it's very, very with a lot of water and very good. It's amazing. 
nice nice on Around just below the barrage in Liuk, and the rivers dropped to record low levels, the lowest ever recorded according to the gauging station data. And what happens when they take some water out for the hydropower generation is it leaves the river with almost nothing, not barely enough to kayak even. So there might be a little bit more water coming in a little channel down there on the left, but it looks pretty dismal. Well, here's our camp spot along the road between Liuk and Sierre. What a difference a night makes. Look at the water came up, covered up our fire pit. We have a river with some water in it now. But with all these hydroelectric diversions, they put the water in and out of the river at their whim. So down to Sion where they'll return another probably 50 CMS. Some uh, Well, we got 
Plain Soleil Fendant Appellation de Origen Controle Valle. So that's right here. And this one's Terra Helveticum Pinot Noir du Valle. So we're here at the Barrage de Vionat. And what they do here is they have a roughly 10 meter high dam that blocks the Rhone in a section where it got the pretty higher gradients, like dropped 10 meters per kilometer for about four kilometers. So what they did in the 1940s, just after World War II, they finished a, this dam and they built the four kilometer long tunnel through the rock here on the river right side. And they divert up to 220 cubic meters per second of water through there. It goes into the turbines downstream about 40 meters lower in elevation. So it generates a huge amount of power. So at times like we are here on July 4th, uh, and the flow upstream of the barrage is below 220 cubic meters per second. They only have the minimum flow release, which is through those little holes in the, in the dam. And that's maybe a couple hundred, 200 CFS, maybe five cubic meters per second, maybe a little less. It might be enough to get through, but it's not, it's not fun at all, and it's pushing the raft over a lot. But anyway, we're going to make it through and get down. 2K down is the thermal bath of La Vey. And we'll probably check that out. And another couple K down. The water returns and we get to St. Maurice. See what we got here. <laughs> Where are we now? Time, a little last bit on Lake Geneva. The winds were surprisingly absent down here on the lake when we got here later in the afternoon. Nice paddle. The water's so much warmer than the Rhone. It's nice to jump in and swim. And uh, you can pull into one of these boat docks here and take out. It was a very unique trip. Uh, it's unique because it's kind of built up everywhere, but it still feels like you're out in the middle of the wilderness. Especially right here at the end, in Lake Geneva. It feels like you're camping on a beach on a secluded island with a city in the distance. The mouth of the Rhone again, this time solo in a kayak, and I'm gonna paddle across Lake Geneva. It's about 65 kilometers or so between here and Geneva, the outflow of the lake. 